This video is sponsored by NordPass. More about them later in the video. Two professions that are quite often confused for each other are civil engineers and structural engineers. And really, who has to blame for this? As they've both got a civil engineering degree at the heart of their course, but they had very different roles and stuff that they work on. So when you're needing to choose whether you want to be a civil engineer or a structural engineer, how do you know which to pick and which is going to suit best for you? All right, so we're going through the differences and what is the same about these two professions? In reality, they work on very different areas. My name's Brendan, you're a structural engineer. Now let's get into it. Both of these professions have really good career path and arcs as they're really enjoyable and they work in very similar sectors. And you both need to hold a civil engineering degree. So whether you're a civil engineer, you'll hold a civil engineering degree, or you're a structural engineer, you still hold a civil engineering degree, but you may have specialized more in structures than the other different sectors that you may have worked on. See, civil engineers and structural engineers have very diverse career paths. It can end up in very different locations, working on vastly different projects. So you need to make sure that you're focusing on something that you really enjoy and something that you wanna work on. So where does the similarities lie? As we were starting to say, both of you hold a civil engineering degree. At the heart of it, your degree comes from the same area and both will work with the built environment. So everything that you can see around you, whether it be houses, infrastructure, roads, drainage, you'll have some sort of interaction with the infrastructure that makes the city tick. So you have the ability to affect many different lives. You also both need to have a strong background in maths and physics and how the built environment actually works as you will be using it day in, day out. It's something that's really required for really any engineer. You can't go past needing those problem solving abilities. So whether you're a civil engineer or a structural engineer, you need to have a strong problem solving mindset and be able to solve those most complex problems that can see not the most typical results or the most common solutions. Before I go into the differences, I'll break down what actually a structural engineer does and what a civil engineer does so you can have a better understanding of the type of work you may be working on with both careers. Structural engineer, as the name sounds, you work on structures. Whether that be a small residential house, large skyscrapers that change the skyline of any city, or even temporary and other structures, this is the type of work that you'd be working on. Even sometimes structural engineers may be suggested to work on tunnels or bridges, although sometimes that's more related to transport, or even sometimes classed as a civil engineer, as it's civil infrastructure. But really at heart, designing things such as tunnels and bridges is structural engineering as you need to make sure the structure stands up under the loads that are applied to it. So a structure and engineer really works on the bones of the structure. When you think about an architect, an architect makes how the building actually looks, flows and interacts with the built environment, while a structure engineer actually makes that dream come to play. So you're making sure that it's structurally sound to resist any loads that may be applied to it. So whether that be lateral loads from wind, making sure that your lateral systems can resist those loads. Whether it be vertical load from gravity, making sure they're transferring through loads, through columns and slabs, and making sure that your ground or floor doesn't vibrate enough to cause impact to the occupants within inside as you can build a structure that is structurally safe but potentially bounces a lot when people are sitting on the floors now we've all been in buildings like that and we can see how discomforting it is so we're making sure that when we are designing them we are considering those other aspects of human induced vibration and how it may affect the occupants within as a structural engineer you will be working with also different materials, whether it be wood, steel, concrete, and even composite materials at some aspects. So you're working with a lot of varying materials and making sure that they're safe and sound for the loads that are applied to them. Another aspect of structural engineering that people don't often talk about is also assessing the integrity of existing structures or making sure that you're modifying or renovating buildings for different occupancy use. So you'll be going potentially into existing buildings, looking at the structure, and evaluating whether it's structurally safe to keep in use and writing reports for any remedial work or repair work. Now, repair work is something that people don't think about, but it's really one of the most enjoyable areas that you can work on as it makes you fully understand how structural engineering works and how the load transfers through a structure. So if you are looking for a structural integrity, it's not something that I would necessarily recommend you start off with, but maybe something you look into the future as you can build those strong design aspects and how buildings actually work, then using it to assess the structural integrity and how you can actually repair structures and remediate them to make sure they're safe. In short, basically you're making sure the built environment is safe to live, work and play in. Building the bones that the buildings stand up on. This video is sponsored by NordPass. So what is NordPass? NordPass is a password management system for businesses. It allows you to share your most secure data, whether it be passwords or payment information with the highest cybersecurity protocols today. Password management 
and making sure that your staff is using the most secure passwords at hand can be really time consuming for all staff. So if you have to log into things quite regularly, it's quite hard to remember the more complex passwords, meaning that your data is more secure. And NordPass takes this off your hands with this secure system. It allows you to share that most secure data efficiently, easily, and even revoke access quickly at the touch of your fingertips. So it means your most important data, which is your password and payment information, is easily controlled and you can control who has access to it by easily revoking access when you need to. As it is primarily also a password-based manager, it means that you can quickly scan all the passwords that are being used within your organization, making sure they're the most secure and no repeat or weak passwords. So you can take action wherever you need to to making sure that you're increasing the security of the passwords that you have out there. They also have a data breach scanning system. So it means they scan whenever your data has been leaked. So whenever that occurs, you can quickly jump on top of it, making sure that the damage is at the minimal point possible. And you might even be able to pick it up before any damage actually occurs. NordPass is offering a three month free trial to businesses with the link in the below description and using the following code, which means that you can try it risk-free and see how it goes and see whether it actually suits you and your operation. Now let's get back to the content. Let's come into civil engineering. Civil engineering is slightly different. Typically, you're interacting with how the actual planning and drainage of an interface works. So potentially you're looking at either a single building and how the drainage comes down and out to the outlet. Big developments of how the overland flow goes, making sure that you're not flooding any specific location where the flow may go through, making sure that it's got a path through it so don't flood out specific structures. You'd also be looking at where roads go, how they're shaped and where the drainage comes from. So you're making sure that there's correct flow and pathing through certain developments. So whether it be those planning developments or drainage systems. And something that is not often thought about is how the drainage systems actually work. As they're really invisible, they're hidden below ground and work. Where things don't work, you quite often see it in a lot of floods and other environments. So the only time that it comes into play is when the drainage system doesn't actually work. As they're quite invisible and something that's quite often overlooked, but is extremely important for a functioning society. Other areas that you may be looking at is such things as large civil infrastructure, whether that be large retaining walls, culverts, or other aspects like that. So where you're shaping the ground and the environment around it, making sure that it's functional for what it needs to be used for, making sure that you're not either getting flooding or roads that are too steep, meaning the car bottoms out, or corners that are too sharp for the speeds that are applied to them. Well, sometimes it doesn't always work out, as in hilly and windy structures, sometimes you just need to have those curves, but you will potentially set the speed limits on those corners. As you can see those yellow signs for the suggested speed limit around those corners. As sometimes in hilly and windy environments, you don't have control over how sharp those corners got to be. So that's where you get those suggested speed signs saying that this is how fast this corner has been designed for, for optimal use to making sure that it's safe. Civil engineering can also sometimes be thought about working on bigger infrastructure works. So whether it be your big bridges, tunnels, or other environments like that. So it's really working with the soil and shaping it to making sure that it both has access and drainage for what it needs to be. But a lot of time those bigger aspects normally get lumped in the transport sector. So you might be a civil engineer in the transport sector, working on those type of projects. So whether you're in the profession, quite often a civil engineer, you're normally working with the drainage planning and other aspects like that. Where a civil engineer in the transport sector will be working on that more bigger infrastructure, like large infrastructure systems, like big retaining walls, big bridges, tunnels, and other aspects like that. So there's a slight variation depending on whether you're in the civil sector or the public sector, depending on what you're working on. But as we can see, the problem is civil engineering is kind of like a broader topic. So depending on what business you're working on, your work can vary greatly. So there's a big variety of work that you can potentially work on. Where in structures, it's quite easy. Normally working on buildings, whether that be large, small, or even bridges, you know what you're working towards. So structural engineering is a little bit more specialized typically than civil engineering, which is still more a broad term, similar to what the degree that you studied before. Me personally, I love structural engineering, so I would recommend it to anyone. But if you're looking at more of those big planning and how you can shape the actual cities and the flow of different infrastructures, civil engineering is definitely the one to work for. But it doesn't matter whether you're a structural engineer or a civil engineer. So I've got nine successful habits here to making sure that you're accelerating your career and on the right path to be the best structural engineer or civil engineer that you need to be. And if you want to support the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. And there's two ways that you can do this. You can either become a YouTube or Patreon member. Without the support of both my YouTube and Patreon members, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, keep learning, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.